The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to The Foundation. The Foundation. 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 The foundation. The foundation. The foundation. The foundation of Hard Grants is brought to you by Alive, Bahamas Bus and Truck, Burger King, Commonwealth Bank, Divinia Grill Foods, Marcos Pizza, Mobile Garage Technologies, and Scotia Bank. The foundation. The foundation. Excuse me for me to interruption. Boy, he come and the way reminder to say, this coming Friday, and a police gonna roll with a blonde. You went to see my number one town round town. I did so Friday evening. Boom! The people did working. Fana, fana, Lord, them here did this. Bim! It made them feel that ain't no summer set. Great on with the great on with the disco operator. Five double eighteen and a six tweeter. Uh, this is DJ Top Sweeter. Uh, see on him just a up with the echo chamber. But watch your man. Play the play. I didn't want to tear off the game. Them off is safe with them cast it down and play. Oh Lord. Play 45. Let's keep them alive. Play this coming. Give my feet down fence. Oh, I'ma play LP. Say them really love me. They must be jump and spring. But this a dance and a free. I did so Friday evening. Bim! The people them tired of working. Fan up and Lord, them here did this complain. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 96.9 FM Radio. Howard Grant in your company. The Foundation. Dacian. Live and in full effect. So happy to be here in your company today. It's a beautiful day, beautiful Friday. I'm uh, finally seeing the sun come out. All those persons who get in their vehicles clean, I'm jealous of you. Um, um, you know, I try to get these guys to clean it out here. And they say, well, you know, it can take long. Well, I'm going to be here for two hours, sir. How long can you possibly take? I'm not going to fight you. If you're out there, you're cleaning cars, you got to hit your boy up. Uh, so we can get that thing done here on Fridays. At least let the fella look good for the weekend before we go to church, so forth and so on. And so happy to be in your company today. It's a beautiful day, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you pick up your newspaper, some information in the newspaper. We're laid back, uh, live and in full effect today. Uh, sort of a casual Friday. We normally kind of chop down the week that was. Uh, it was a short week this week, but nonetheless, we can be able to kind of put some things on the table. Um, if you look up the papers today, today, your birthday, happy birthday to you. My son's birthday is in four days. So he's going to be 17 years old. I know he's going to be excited about that. If you're celebrating a birthday in the month of April, we say happy birthday to you. And um, uh, you pick up the papers today and you can see exactly what's what. This is Bahama opening, um, Bahama open, sorry, to the RCI collaboration, right? It says that Davis says that the PI project could help improve overall tourism product. Um, man, well, we can st- oh God, Ooh, you, you, you. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. This is uh, it's, it's, when I read it this morning, I was like, well, well, I see what's happening here. Um, we're gonna farm out more and more industry in this country and push. Uh, all those others aside. So let's see if we can be able to dive into that conversation. But before we do that, we have to say it's Tiki Fridays. So happy to be here with you guys on Tiki Friday. 
So happy to be here. Listen to me. I just got a call from Byron this morning. It is an absolutely beautiful day today. And always eager to kind of be here with you and kind of chop these things down on Tiki Friday. He says that he's giving 30% off to every Bahamian that comes through. Just show your ID. You can be able to get 30% off between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. tonight. He's always doing wonderful things down there at the Tiki Hut. Uh, on West Bay Street, you can be able to check him out on Tiki Fridays. It's always a wonderful thing how we can be able to get that thing done. I'm so happy to be here with you guys and kind of chop it down. Guys, I'm, um, listen, man, this is the day. I don't know. Oh, Lord. I, and Fridays is always a peculiar day for me because the one day that I thought that we could be able to kind of kick back and throw our, <laughs> throw our feet up and have a good conversation about, you know, get nostalgic and talk about some things. We find so much stuff in the newspaper to push forward. We see Toby in the in the paper again this morning. It says, as RCI pushes the project, Smith tells the government, le uh, level the playing field for Bahamians. Level the playing field for Bahamians and the Prime Minister's mum on FTX. This is some information. The Chief Justice will give a decision on shanty demolition, shantytown demolition on May 3rd. So this is the information that's actually coming out there. And we just got some information in. Breaking news. So talk about two family members have been found unresponsive in the area of Ross Connor. If you're just saying that, if you didn't have an opportunity to see that, and there's some information indicating that it could be or it is the one of the um, uh, victims based upon the allegations that's circling on so, uh, social media, media, it could be um, uh, the birthday of one of these particular persons. So we continue to pray for our country, man. We continue to pray for uh, some sort of conflict res resolution. We continue to pray for... Uh, an opportunity to be able to get a break. Come on, man. Let's, let's get a break. Let's get a break. We pray for that break in the cloud for you to understand that it ain't that serious. Let's talk about those things. You know, the overwhelming response as we can be in this particular moment. I remember I was in this issue this time, man, and, and I want to be able to talk about those things. But before we, you know, kind of special guest, all the way from Montego Bay, I think that's where he is, I called him up and I said, what happened? You 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 use big time people now, eh? You, you got to be big time now. You're supposed to be my boy. You always come and be on all my station. Now I only could see you around the country talking about transgender and trans this and trans that. <laughs> you want me rain down fire from heaven, eh, boy? Huh? That's the only time I can see him now. But now he's, he's taking a little vacation or taking some time off. Uh, but I appreciate an opportunity for him to kind of call in today to have this kind of a conversation with me. Um, uh, if, if only for an hour we could be able to do that. None other than my very good friend, Cassius Stewart. Cassius, my brother, how you doing, man? You got him in there? He should be in the queue. Cassius, if you're not on, my brother, make sure you can be able to hit me up and get that. Cassius should be on with me today. Let me just text him and make sure that he's good. I'm, um, we're on, Cassius. So he can be able to do those things. Well, he's all the way in Montego, but he says to me that he's down in Jamaica. Cassius, you got to unmute, my brother. He says that you press and play, press your mute. You press it, Cassius? Make sure you unmute. You got you to make sure got to make sure that you unmute. They we're right here waiting on you, my brother. So we're, we're in here. We're going to talk about these things. Um, um, I had one incident one time. I, I guess all of us have this in the society that we live in. I had this one incident, and um, it almost escalated into a major fight, you know. I had been going through significant tribulations financially, and so my mind was preoccupied with that and really mulling around trying to figure out how I could make this thing happen. And somebody from left field, um, uh, obviously uh, engaged by the devil himself, approached me. Right. And, you know, started to talk all kind of foolishness. And instantly, all I could hear is this kind of a siren in my ears. And everything else was buck. And I could hear these suggestions coming to me very strong, audible suggestions about what I should do. The most violent thing I couldn't think of myself to kind of do. Right. And I said to myself, this has to be something darker. This has to be some external influence. And the only way, because I was susceptible, I was open and I was broken and I was able to be used in this moment. And the only thing that actually was my saving grace is an idea to say that, okay, well, if after this particular thing is done, that's it for you. 
that's just it for life. And so I say that to say that many of us are in this kind of position where we find ourselves confronted. I'm here. Can you hear me, Howard? Uh, yeah, we're live in full effect. I say that to say that we could find ourselves con confronting these issues, but we have to figure out a way to be able to get the conflict resolution. Cassius, I'm just talking about uh, some information that came across my phone about two persons who were found deceased in Ross Connor. Oh. Uh, I think it was a mother and a daughter. I know that you're not here on the island right now. But um, uh, there's some major things happening in the country, right, man. Say, say good afternoon to the Bahamian people. Good afternoon, my family, my countrymen. I love you guys so much. I love the Bahamas so much. And I do believe that we got to fight hard to preserve what we know as the Bahamas. What we're seeing is not really the Bahamas. All of this consummation of our society, our, our culture, you know, we got to fight to preserve what we know as the Bahamas. And, um, you know, we got we to gotta do something with all this killing on the streets. You know, our young men uh, are angry and bitter. And uh, we have to find better ways of socially uh, and socializing and engineering our people so that they can be more responsible. And um, <coughs> but also find a way to give them a piece of the economic pie. Because I find that a lot of people who are in, 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 in desperation and poverty, you know, they have nothing to lose. So they do what they do because they have nothing to lose. And we got to give them something to fight for. And mm -hmm. um, that's why we got to give them a piece of the economic pie, a piece of the Bahamas. You know, that's <coughs> It has, to be, excuse me, it has to mean more than just having a passport. But means owning land and owning property and seeing a future for yourself and your children and also living comfortably. And I think everybody strive, everybody who woke up this morning wants to wants a better life for themselves. They want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. They want to be a part of seeing the country grow. But it seems as if doors are shut and you know we, we've created avenues for the select through few. And us, we only getting the crumbs from the crumbs. And so we have to change that dynamics. We have to change that scenario. And, uh, you know, we got to give these young men something to fight for, not fight themselves. You know, fight them. Let's give them something to build. Let them build that country instead of destroying it. You know, so my heart is broken every day when I see this carnage in our streets. And, uh, you know, we, but we, we blame the police and we say the police is not doing a good job, but it's not the police fault. We have not socially engineered our children properly, the family structure is broken down because the, the kids didn't learn discipline in the homes. And so when they get into wider society, they just express what they learn in their homes, which is absolutely nothing. And so we have to do a better job of engineering our society. Have we, Cassius, I haven't had an opportunity, when you come back from um, uh, Montego Bay and, uh, you know, in the Blue Mountains, wherever you are, uh, you got to come sit with me. But have yeah. we, the question I have is this, for the past 50 years, because really we are doing a lot of reflection, especially in this year of our jubilee. Uh, now, I've seen you taken on a very strong position. I think a lot of persons have actually seen us. You and I, am, uh, we're no, no strangers. We always, you always sit on my platforms and we always um, uh, engage in great conversations. So I, I always enjoy that with you. But I'd like to know from you, have we, over the past 50 years, really seen the true potential of what exists um, uh, or what's supposed to exist post-independence for the Bahamian people? Have we realized that? Or have we yielded ourselves to the idea so much so and accepted this kind of position of, of labor, right? Like, have we accepted the fact that, uh, forget about this idea of hope of independence post-independence. Forget about this idea of liberation and an opportunity to be able to see your dreams. We are now accepting this kind of a position of the perpetual laborer in this country. Talk to me about it. Well, you know, the, 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 the former prime minister of Singapore made a statement when he came to Chogham in nineteen in the 1980s. He said, you know, the Bahamas has, has great potential, but it must be guarded against corruption. And, um, and you read Lee Kuan Yew's book from, first world, from Third World to First, you know, he, he said that, you know, we have great potential to be a great powerhouse. But if we let corruption be the order of the day, we will go nowhere. And um, that has been our major problem as a country. It's been corruption that has been really the, the cancer that is eroding our society. So we've never really even begun to touch the surface of the potential of the Bahamas. And, you know, for those who benefit from corruption, the Bahamas is okay. Um, but from those, but us who are looking from the outside, we're saying, you know, we could do better than this. We could do better than this. There should never be a, a hint of corruption where our ministers are hauled before the courts on both sides. You know, it, we should never see things like that. You know, we should never see things where the people we put in place to, to, to guard the, 
the God to be the guardians of the democracy, to be the guardians of our 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 country. They're the ones who are rating it. And so, you know, and so but there's this, 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 it seems people. like there's a subconscious expectation that people who came from deprived, broken situations and conditions, environments where they've never yeah. had anything now have an opportunity to be exposed to so much with lack of management, lack of insight, lack of financial understanding. Uh, there is an unspoken reality that says, well, you could teeth, but you shouldn't take everything. There's this unspoken concept that exists among us as a community, as a people that says, well, you know, I can't feel it for yourself, but my God, you can't take everything. There is this expectation of corruption. Talk to me, Cassius. It's a, it's a scene. See, you have a you have these sometimes they say, well, you know, um, well, this party ain't the one chief, but it's everybody else's benefit. <laughs> that party is chief, but and so the people expect them to thief or steal. But you see, it's that seed that has been planted. And once you plant that seed, that seed grows into a forest. And while you may think it's a small something, it grows into something bigger. We have to be able to say, listen, how do we become honest citizens? Not elect the party because we know they can steal, but everybody else can get something while they're stealing. That's not how you run a country. You know, it's it's across the board. Listen, the Bahamas is a very prosperous country. And um, we have the potential to make most of the people in our country successful. We have an economy which was almost 11 billion. We have an 11 billion, we have an 11 billion economy. And because the economy is so vibrant and dynamic, we can, we can therefore then lend, we can lend opportunities for Bahamians to benefit greatly. But, it, you know, for those who are guarding the, the table, you know, they only let the crumbs fall on the ground for the masses of people while they keep it for themselves. This is why... For the next 50 years, we have to change the dynamics. Okay, so 50 years, we've been an independent nation. Um, in 50 years, 90% of everybody who holds a bank account got less than $300 in it. <coughs> Are we successful? In 50 years, 155,000 behemoths are diagnosed with diabetes. Are we successful? In 50 years, we have the highest elevation of cancer around the world. Are we successful? In 50 years, hypertension, the number one killer of behemoths, which is perhaps almost 200,000 behemoths, died high blood pressure. Are we successful? And so we have to take a microcosm or microscope look at our society and say, while we may look good, cosmetically we look better than probably every, every Caribbean nation, cosmetically. Let, let, let's do this, Cassius, because I like what you're saying, because you quantify health and our well-being with whether or not we're successful. But those people who have and one way or another scraped and kind of clawed their way to leadership in this country, only look at the tangibles. In 50 years, we have able to identify and, and develop a, a system or, you know, perpetuate a, an educational system to provide opportunities. But we're successful. In 50 years, we've been able to do this much uh, work, road work, and build infrastructural development for those people who would have never had it. I think we're successful. In 50 years, we're able to do so much in terms of forging relationships Relationships and bringing in great big projects into the Bahamas, I think that we're successful. So we have to be able to have a, a very clear conversation in terms of perspective. Which perspective so go, are we going to look at? Let's go, let's go graduating majority of our people with a D average. In 50 years, the Minister of Health is saying that if you if you're not really if you're not if you're not really really sick, don't come to the hospital because we ain't got no space. You know, in 50 years. You know, we can't seem to get the health care situation together. In 50 years, we can't seem to get the educational system together. In 50 years, we still have high levels of poverty in the country. In 50 years, when you look at it now, I mean, so we got to say to myself, but, but how something got to be going right. Years gonna be? But something got to be going right it? because if the former prime minister could stand up in the House of mm -hmm. Assembly and indicate, whilst Branwell McCartney, McCartney seeking an opportunity to be able to find himself in a position of power to shift the dynamics of what's happening here, and a former prime minister could say, well, if I don't get it, you get it, then there has to be something going right because the people of the country agree with them. The people of the country agree with both the FNM and the PLP that there can be no other opportunity. Mm -hmm. You, 
who had an opportunity to be able to lead your organization and continue to seek an opportunity to find leadership or to put yourself in leadership in this country are left out in the cold being able to talk to these issues with, without be, being able to give a, a, a get an opportunity. So let's talk about this. Let's be very clear about this. If we can look at this and see the glaring, very clear understanding that there's something wrong in our society, what is happening to the people of the Bahamas that they can't see the same? Talk to me about it. Yeah. But let's, I mean, let's just take us. Let's take it slow. Let's take it slow. Okay. We gained independence in 1973, almost 50 years ago this July, right? Just take a look. I mean, everybody who's listening to the sound of my voice, just look at our society. Like I said, cosmetically, we have nice roads for the most part. We have beautiful hotels and beautiful resorts. The tourism sector benefits is, is growing greatly, which is really good. Um, people are coming to the Bahamas, which is really good. But in 50 years, though, all those persons who've been into the hotel industry, have they really benefited or they just have enough money to get paid to come back to work? You see, you, you've got to understand it's, cre it's creation of wealth, not sustaining my lifestyle. But the we've never been taught to that. The but you see, we don't want you just to sustain our lifestyle. In other words, I could pay my light, my water, and um, and then go back to work next week because I broke. We need to create wealth. We need to figure out how do we now use the tourism industry to create wealth for the Bahamian. So the average coupé worker or the person who's working on the floor on the, on the casino or the, the bartender, we need to figure out now, even though they may be getting paid, they have separate accounts where they are generating wealth. Now, all of those people you see there, according to the central bank governor, 90% of our owners will get $300 in the bank, even though they go to work every day and they work hard. And so really, it's really have we created wealth for the nation. No. And so, and so that is, uh, that is what I'm, that's the, uh, I don't know, because then when you look at it now, so we are creating wealth, right? One, but then on the other hand, most of us are sick. So 155,000 people, which is 40% of the nation is diagnosed with diabetes, right? That's 40% of the country and, and counting. Then hypertension, which is an I, listen. Then hypertension, which is the number one killer of behavior. That is, I, we I can't even get the, the statistics on that. What is the number? So if 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 if, if, if hypertension is the number one killer, then perhaps we have about two hundred thousand. But Cassius, and the minister said almost on all the minister said a month ago that cancer is on the rise. So we have a high level of breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer. And if I could say everybody who's listening to me. Raise your hand if you know somebody who has or know somebody who died from cancer. Everybody would raise their hand because it's, it's spreading wide through our society. So in 50 years, what type of country we could have 50 years with all of us sick and dying, one, and we broke? Yes, what yes. kind of country we have? I won't touch this with you. I, I won't touch this with you because I hate to be, uh, I hate to structure it like this, but I, I just want to be for a realist for, for a moment. When we have a conversation about the fact that um, uh, we have a D average, I always try to figure out what difference does it make. Let me tell you why. When you go, I've had an opportunity, be, I had the luxury, let's, let's I see it sarcastically, I had the luxury of being able to be educated in the government system, right? And in the government do, system, we I, I went to, to Eight Mile High School and the government system my entire mm -hmm. life. And in going to Eight Mile Primary School, Montana Primary School, Eight Mile High School, I've gone to the government system. And, and then coming out of school, going back to COB and being able to see these particular mm -hmm. things, and I recognize something. This system is not designed to be able to educate you, to empower you, to provide you with anything other than the necessity of being able to read, write, the three R's, read and write and rip and tick. That's it. So you're able to function on a low level, low, all you need to do is functioning for the necessity of survival. Mm -hmm. This D yep. equates to an opportunity that you can be, because the, the hotel system, the, for the majority, the second largest employer in the country is the hotel. The hotel system doesn't require you to have an A. The hotel system is repetitive, relentless, repetitive nature. That's all it is. When you come in, you do the exact same thing day in and day out. I often, often talk about this concept uh, in the uh, in the Sheridan Hotel at one point, they identify some people who were on the spectrum. Some persons who were, were um, um, they had learning challenges and they actually employed them. And they said, we're going to try this particular thing. And they employed these people who were not able to function in day-to-day -day life and gave them this sort of a rhythm. Uh, you pick up this here, you fix this here, you fix that there. These people have been working to the hotel for 20 years. 
I just trying to get yeah. you to understand yeah. something. There is no need for you to have education if the only opportunities that exist for you is that an opportunity that you could learn hands on in these particular spaces. That's my first point. Precisely. The yeah. second yeah. point yeah. is is this. The second point, so you look at the D average and you say that the second point is, is this, for those dreamers in our society, for those dreamers, those Josephs who recognize that there mm. can be more in this society as they grow and they find themselves creating projects and concepts and ideas and presenting that to these conglomerates, to these businesses, to these government entities, so forth and so on, and find themselves on the outskirts as their projects is being stolen to be able to be utilized and never been given an opportunity. Talk to me. Then you ask yeah. yourself, why the hell do I try? Many people retreat to the bottle as a result. So the question yeah. is, and so when they start to have these conversations about the fact that there is on rise, the sentiment that I hear on the ground in our society is that, well, something got to take you. That is the conversation that we have in because yeah. people dreams and hopes have been eroded because of a lack of leadership that exists in this country. So when you start to talk like this, Cassius, I like what you're saying, but the fact of the matter, it does not translate into the average person's mind in our society. They are looking yeah. for a way out. They hoping to God right. that there is true adventure in death. Man, talk to me, Cassius. Let's talk like well, this. You know, it's, 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 it's creating the paradigm. You know, you know we, we've created a society where um, the mindset is, oh yeah, well, you know, you gotta go for, some, you gotta go, you gotta go someday. You know, I, all of us, all of us have to die, but you know, I don't have to die prematurely, and so I don't want to die prematurely. I want to go out knowing that I fulfill my purpose. But when you start to talk about wanna... wealth, Cassius, when you start to talk about wealth creation, oh, that I has guess, never I been a conversation guess. for us, Cassius. That has never been a see, part but, of us. Well, That's for them. But listen, see, instead of instead of the the, the president of the BUT insist on teaching money management in the schools from, from, from third grade, teaching them what is money, how to invest money, how to turn money over. You want to teach them about uh, a, a transgender, about a, a, a male and a female and another alternative lifestyle. They don't need to learn them kind of nonsense. Teach them how to manage money. Teach them how to turn that one dollar into fifty dollars, into a hundred dollars, into a thousand dollars. They will never That's teach you really that, matters. Cassius. They will never they, teach us that. But they won't teach. But they won't teach you little boys how to be girls and you know girls why? Boys. They, Subconsciously, them, we have to comply with. Mm -hmm. you, you remember when? You remember when? Um, and I said this before. You remember when Fred Mitchell came back from the Vatican? You remember when there was this mm -hmm. sort of excursion under the PLP administration? Um, I think it was during the 2012. And they came back from the mm -hmm. Vatican and, and Fred Mitchell in his capacity as Minister of Foreign Affairs would have been able to speak to the country and say that it's a very important that if we're going to align ourselves, that we have to prepare ourselves in this particular manner, I surmise it, right? And we there was a, this sort of rift between him and Miles Monroe at that particular time, right? And yeah. I thought about mm -hmm. this and it has never left. So, so whilst there was a social issue uh, associated with why we're taking on these views, the government of the Bahamas has aligned, and I'm talking about successive administrations, have aligned the people to accept these things because they start to talk about, well, when you need relief for hurricanes, when you need relief for this, when you need relief for that, when you need assistance in these areas, we have to comply with whatever the agenda is externally to ensure that internally our people have an opportunity to be able to access the funds that they need for survival. <coughs> for in survival. Other words, we <coughs> In other words, we got to bend down. But you don't have to bend down, bend down tomorrow. Down. Learn to bend now. We no, no, we ain't going to bend down. We ain't going to bend down. Listen, we, we got to let people like Fred Mitchell and all these government leaders know that God is our source. God is the source. He's the head of the Bahamas. And, you know, don't let these countries tell you that if you don't capitulate and do this nonsense, that they then give you this. There are many nations. Howard, since I started this crusade, more than 5 million people reached out to me <laughs> from around the world. All through Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, from South Africa, throughout the Caribbean, and they say they're standing with the Bahamas. Do not give in. Do not give in to these people who talk in this nonsense. That is not the majority of the nations. In America, 7% of the people identify as the LGBT community. 7% dictating to 350 million people. That yeah. doesn't make no sense. Yeah. So they, they are not in the majority. They're in the minority, but they dictate. That's making it look like they're bigger than they are. They are not bigger than they're supposed to be. And we should not bow down. We should not bend down. If, the, if they don't want to give us their aid, let them keep their aid. But we got to stand up and be willing to die for what we believe in. We will not teach our little boys to wear panties. 
We will not teach our boys how to be men. And we can teach our women how to be women. In the Bahamas, we are a heterosexual um, um, country. We're not homosexual. But Cassius, not embracing man Cassius, man. you and I, are. you that's and I got we, to... That's not what we believe. We got to talk about more we than we, this. We got to... We, we don't believe... We don't believe in that. I want to talk. I want to talk to you about that because I seen this kind of a crusade that you're on right now, and um, um, I want to know. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of persons can be able to lend you their vocal position and say, "Yeah, well, I support you, baby. I right there with you." But you and I know oh so well that you know Mount could say anything. We need your ex when it comes down time to vote, and I want to know whether or not we are uh, would participate not just in in word. But indeed, also, I want to know about that, whether or not persons are actually showing up in person to make these things happen. Let's yeah. take this quick commercial break, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation. Be right back after this. The Foundation. Foundation. Sweet and Heat meet Burger King NASA. Introducing the new Mango Habanero King that features a signature mango habanero sauce, two flame grilled beef patties, two slices of cheese, bacon, and spicy jalapenos, all on a toasted sesame seed bun. Enjoy the mango habanero king in a combo or ask for the plant-based version. Either way, this sandwich offers just enough sweet to bring on the heat. The new mango habanero king from Burger King NASA, where taste is king. At Bahamas Bus and Truck Company Limited, we provide vehicles known for quality and durability. From the Cherokee, we've got your everyday driver covered. For larger tasks, our Ram 1500, Mitsubishi Fuso Canter Trucks, CMC Verica Vans, and Fuso Rosa Jitneys do way more than just deliver. We even carry a wide variety of pre-owned vehicles. To keep you going, our parts, service department, and body shop can accommodate our brands and others. Call us today at 322-1722 or email info at bahamasbus.com. Jet off to the basketball playoffs with your Scotiabank credit card. You could be courtside in the middle of the action with an all-expenses-paid trip, plus airfare, spending money, and accommodations to the next basketball playoffs. Just apply for any Scotia credit card. Spend $120 or more on a purchase or use our Scotia Select Pay installment plan to win a slam-dunk trip to the next basketball playoffs. Cur to see of your Scotia credit card. Visit bs.scotiabank.com for more information. Ready to step into the future? From your front door to the backyard and everywhere in between. See and speak to whoever's there with ring video doorbells and security cameras now available at Alive. Protect with matters most. All from one easy app. Available in your Google or Apple Play Store. Visit bealive.com slash ring to learn more. We are Alive. Divania's Grilled Food and Products are now open in the Kenneth Plaza, Prince Charles Drive. Come, you must try the jerk chicken, jerk pork, and all their amazing grilled food. Grilled daily to perfection using all their amazing sauces made right here in the Bahamas. Divania's Grilling Good Food for Life. Call or what's up Divania's today at 817-4468. Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant, the foundation on this beautiful Friday here, live and in full effect. If you want to be a part of the conversation, 323-623-22325. 4316-325-4259, anywhere from the family of islands, 242-300-5720-242-300-5720, or hit me up on the text, 422-4796. Cassius Stewart is on with me today. Cassius, listen, let me take the telephone call before we get to anything. Call you on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hey, hey uh, how are you doing? I'm good, man. What's happening with you? I'm fine. Cassius Stewart, how are you? God is good. How are you? Yeah, I appreciate your stand, what you take and watch you on television all, you, time, all the time with Janique Miller. Thank and I appreciate your you, stand on the transgender thing. But Howard, Thank you. Um, I need to correct something to you. 
The Jaffa did not count for no PLP or no government MPs. The what? It didn't count for no government MPs. I didn't hear you say what didn't come from that. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Howard? Can you yeah, go ahead. I didn't hear what you say. What didn't come from that? Yeah, the Jaffa for transgender to be in school. They didn't come from the PLP. Oh, they didn't, sorry, they didn't come from the government MPs. Uh, I came from the president of the teachers' union. Oh, I didn't say they didn't come from the government. You let in, but then get away. No. Teacher Jack, hold on. Teacher Jack to the Ministry of Education that, um, and, and, have, uh, and you could go back in the newspaper and catch his thought. I don't know if you still have it on your file. I have it on my file. It's a push journalist. Teacher Jack to the Ministry of Education that we should have chance to end this in the school. Yeah, I, I okay, okay. You, I listened to you carefully. No, I, I don't think you did. Let the, let, the, let the president, and Kathy Stoller, let the, the president, and Kathy Stoller, you were still with Judith Miller, the president of the teachers you were into Justin, the education. I don't know if you're just tuning into the show. I thank you for your telephone call, my brother. I don't know if you're just tuning into the show, but uh, I indicated the only thing, the only reference I made to yesteryear is when Fred Mitchell would have gone off to the Vatican and came back and said that we need to align ourselves with world views. That's what I said. One. Two, Cassius Stewart indicated that the BUT president, which is the six Pete winning uh, president, which is Belinda Wilson, Wilson, everyone should know that, the BUT president took on this position to indicate that transgender education, right? I think all of us have been having that kind of a conversation over the past three and a half weeks here in this country to talk about those things. So um, uh, we're quite aware. And uh, if there was a misstep, please forgive me, but uh, I think that that is what I indicated at the forefront. Uh, just for the purposes of clarity. And no one's letting anyone get away with this. Uh, this is nothing to, to say that we're letting anyone get away with this. But Linda has a responsibility. And if she's taken this particular task on to indicate through the scope of education that this is what needs to happen to the Bahamian, for the Bahamian student, then that, that's her position as education. We have our position as parents also. And we have to be able to stand firm and strong in our conviction and our position to be able to say that this is what our expectations are. And I think that that's what we bring on the table. Talk to me, Cassie. No, no. I mean, you see, we have to begin to set the parameters in which we want to, which we want to operate as a nation. And um, those parameters should be defined by the moral code in which we believe in. There are some things we believe in and some things we don't believe in. And so, you know, so when it comes to transgender in our schools, I don't think, I don't think Belinda or even those who don't understand the, the, the scope or the gamut of which this whole thing is. Because when you look at what's happening in the United States of America right now, um, they're not teaching trans, they're teaching pornography in the schools for grade six. Mm -hmm. And so for so some of the books that I saw, it's not just, you know, when we were in school, in order to see, uh, you know, something something new, we would have to go sneak on Playboy book. Now, all those are very clear in the book, they te they're teaching the young boys how to, how to perform fellatio. Right, I mean, like, I could be nice on your show, right? And that is that is oral sex. They're teaching the boys how to perform oral sex on grown men, and this is what they want in the school. They're teaching the girls how to be with girls. They're teaching, and so these type of things, it's it's not acceptable for children. School should be a, an institution of learning where you learn not to be sexualized. And 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 while we are a sexual being, you know, there are parameters in which it should be operated, in. and so um, teaching that in the schools is, is unacceptable. It's unacceptable, and um, you know, like I said, we have not taught our children money management. We're not, we have not taught our children investments. We're not taught our children how to, how to be able to flip their money and invest their money on stock exchange. We, we have never taught our children those things. Why the hell you won't get to teach them how to be out of boys and go with boys? We're not considered, you know why? The, I'm convinced that we're not viewed human beings. I'm convinced. But I don't I'm think convinced that, but I would, that uh, well, leadership yeah. doesn't view us as living, breathing human beings with aspirations and hopes for tomorrow. I believe, I'm convinced, even with the language that is used historically to identify the grouping of people that make decisions in this country through votes as grassroots, yeah. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that they see us as sheeple with an expectation that whatever they craft and create they could be able to stuff down the throats of the bahamian people and blossom into their minds that this is the expectation of moving forward i do not believe that there is a desire for us to be able to move contrary to what they say so when they start to have this kind of a conversation with us about um, um uh, transgender education and whatnot there is no consideration for our faith there's no consideration for our conviction. There is only relentless consideration for what the world views us as without an identity unto ourselves. That is, that is crazy to me, Cassius.
It's crazy to me that we have no identity unless plastered by an external entity. In the papers today, you see Bahama taking on a position to talk about their, what they believe about what needs to happen with RCI and the collaboration that would be good. Over the past few weeks, we've seen um, uh, the conversation with RCL. RCL has come on the soil of the Bahamas and said nothing about Toby Smith. I've, I've read nothing about Toby Smith and the position that he's taken, but the conversation has been between uh, what consideration Atlantis has. Well, you know, we and Atlantis can work well together talking over the voices, over the heads of all Bahamian people, all our sentiments and ideas that continues to be able to bubble up in these spaces. They reject that. And they're going talking into investors, talking into shareholders. We are no one in our own home, Cassius. Talk to me about it. No, no, listen, you know, you know, I always say, you know, the Bahamas, we have created a successful country and we have a successful economy, but it's not for the people of the Bahamas. Because when you look at, you know, tourism, I had I had some guests in town and um, they asked me a question, you know, you know, who own most of the hotels? And, 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 and they asked me, why aren't the Hamans owning the hotels? And, you know, I said, you know, for, for the last 50 years, the, the economic model has not been centered around the Hamans in the center. It's been centered around Bahamians as the supporting cast yes. in the movie. You know, we need to be the directors of the movie. And so we, we we have the stage, we have the film, we have everything, but we are the supporting cast in the in the movie. And so this movie that we're creating called The Bahamas, Bahamians are not the actors, we're not the directors. And See, so we need supporting to be the cast is a good director. name. Supporting cast is a good name. If we had a supporting cast role, we may be even considered for... Um, uh, a nomination when it comes down to these particular things, but we have been nothing but extras in our own company, in our own country for yeah. very too, for, for far too long. Let me take a telephone call. Yeah. Calling on the line, you got 30 seconds before we get out of here. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Caller. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing? All right, Cassius. Yes, sir. Cassius, you still yes, sir. the party, the BDM, you still get the political party? Still there. It's still there. It ain't gone away. Cassius, quickly. Time going. Cassius, I think you born. I think you're 72, right? You born in 72? Man, yes. why, why are you telling my age on TV, man? Stop that, man. I, I'm not sure how old he is, but <laughs> I think he's younger than me. But yeah. Cassius, I'm so proud of you. Like the well, thank you, you sir. Get, 70, even 71. Get in 71. There. Cassius, I listened to your comments over the years. Them. Cassius, this is what I don't want to find out from you. Do you have a GoFundMe page? So persons who agree and, and, and like you talk about them five million people that persons can donate funds to you to be able to fight this situation, what's going on, what's, what what they trying to do in the Bahamas with the school stuff. Then the last thing is that the BDM party. Because I think a person like what do you name Toby Smith, he's a Bahamian. I know you gotta screen them and make sure they qualify, check their background and everything. Toby get the party uh -huh. and he sound like he get the fire in his belly. He'll be a good person mm -hmm. to run there in uh, what name Farm Road, what covers Paradise Island. Oh, Cassius, I'm proud of you. I listen to you on the show with Janique. Cassius, you need to go fund me page if you don't have it yet on a YouTube channel. So when you have to speak against the people who you own will be watching on TV or the radio and they don't want you to come on no more, we still can find you. God bless you. I hope God protect you and your family and give you everything you need. Cassius, you help. Cassius is Prime Minister Matilda. Yeah? We need leaders like you, Cassius. People listen to you, and people will love to just shake your hand. Who we'll never meet you? Keep up the good way, God bless. Thank you, man, Papa. I can hear you. Papa, Papa, I, I can hear you. So you're getting through. We're glad to be able to hear that. Let me take the next telephone call, Cassie. It's Cassie. Yeah. Call me on the line. Go ahead. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you doing? Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Listen, I heard the caller was saying that Belinda was making the suggestion on the the transgender being taught in school. However, she wasn't making the suggestion. You know? No. She, the question was asked of her. The question was asked of her by the Rotarian, and she yes. actually indicated that. So the gentleman who called, uh, he was misinformed left, right, and said, I can't even fight him. Exactly. So I just wanted to clarify that yeah. for him, because that wasn't something she came out and suggested. That no. was the question asked of her. Yeah. And being in her position, um, she, she indicated with her honesty. Opinion yeah, her opinion. Yeah. But I like what Cassius started saying. Hi, Mr. Seward. I Hi, guess good morning. How you doing? Day. Um, he was saying um, about teaching the kids um, um, financial stability and how to, to invest their monies. And listen, my kids are in school, and my daughter, for one, she would love... Right now, she's trying to self-teach herself. Mm -hmm. She's trying to be self-taught in that process. Mm -hmm. If they have something like that in school, 
it would make the kids more successful in life. And this, all this crime I show would be done because these young men would be so busy trying to make money, they were not trying to do the foolishness they're doing. Mm-hmm. I appreciate your telephone yes, call. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely, Cassius. Uh, uh, now I know that you yes. are you you you're definitely a busy man. I just want to know whether or not you could be able to join us for the next hour. If not, I'm gonna fight you because you still got to be able to come here in the studio with us whenever you. Let's are go. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's keep. Let's keep it going. Let's go. So let's listen, go. I just want to say, listen. You know, over the last twenty years, you know, Pop has been one of my first. Since I'm a critic, um, but Papa, thank you so much for your kind words. I really appreciate that, and you are absolutely right. Um, just to give you a heads up, um, as a result of those 5 million people who have been reaching out to me all over the world, we have created what we call the Protect the Children Foundation. Um, it's a non-governmental organization, but um, uh, it's it's a global it's a global operation. And uh, within the next 60 days, we're going to hold the blue, we're going to hold the Protect the Children rally in the Bahamas. But we also want to do it in every country of the world. We have New York on board, who is also setting up to do hold the Protect the Children rally. We want to do it in Florida. We're doing it in Jamaica. We're going to be doing it all over the world. And so we want every Bahamian parent who is listening to my son, son of my voice now, get ready. We have to show this government that we have to throw protect the, our children. Throw the website out so the persons can know how to be able to check it and out. And so it, it, it's, it's, it's information now. It'll be the protectthechildren.com. And so we have information right now. Everything is happening in real time. But we already put together the committee to to go ahead to, to, to put this movement going on. Because we have we have, we have contacts coming from South Africa, all throughout, all throughout Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, within the United States. They're saying they're holding the line. They want to support. They want to be a part of what we're doing. Um, you know, so support is very strong, even out of Canada, because people are saying to listen, you know, even something we believe. Wow. And um, the, the word the word coming down to the Bahamas, to the Bahamas, listen, we want to support the Bahamas. We all hold the line, stay strong protect the children. The only thing we got left is we have to be able to preserve our children because our generation, everybody was listening to me, we are the last generation to protect the children before they consume all of our children with this nonsense. If we don't hold a line, all of our children will be gone because they want to teach our children this nonsense that is un- unbiblical, ungodly, and is basically an abomination. And so you can't have what they call, right now in America, they have what they call a drag, drag queen hour where dry queens go into schools from, from, from kindergarten, they read for one hour, but they do their performance. They lewd performance in panties and bra and all this stuff in front of kids. And if you now, they just created a law that if you say anything negative about the transgender um, dry queen hour, you go to jail for six months. Cassius, so we, get, okay for them. we gotta vet some of these things what you're saying because I got a lot of texts here Come saying on, tell Cassius name the book. Tell <laughs> Cassius, bring the information. So we're gonna talk about that. Cassius, we gotta go to a quick break though. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna take this quick commercial break. Go to news and be right back with Cassius Stewart right here on the foundation on this beautiful Friday. We're gonna be right back after this. Foundation. Foundation. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. 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 And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation, on a beautiful layback Friday. Uh, Tiki Friday, make sure you go down to Tiki Hut today uh, around 5 to 7. Show your Bohemian ID, and he'll be able to give you 30% off this evening uh, for all your stuff. Uh, it's going to be a great time, always a great time with my good guy Byron down there. And uh, we're sort of just chopping it down. Today is a beautiful day. If you want to be a part of the conversation, please do so. 323-6232-325-4316. 325-4259. Anywhere from the Family of Islands. 242-300-5720. 300 5720 
or hit me up on the text 422-4796. Uh, we're speaking with none other than Cassius Stewart. My Cassius, I'm so happy that you join us uh, to be able to have this good conversation. I just want to chop it down now. You know, and the sort of this, this spirit and idea of inclusion, I don't know where we've come from in this kind of a new age concept. I really don't. I really, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Because um, uh, I remember there were significant conversations about when I was in high school about whether or not God would come back today, right? You, you remember 1999? <laughs> you remember 1999? Yep. There was this, this kind of a conversation that um, uh, Y2K will bring Jesus. Yeah, it'll be a, a difficult yes, yes. thing after they, yes. the, the clocks weren't designed, the computers weren't designed to be able to see past time. So it'll be an issue. Everything shut down in the world, so forth and so on. These were the engaging conversations that we had about mortality, about our position, about opportunity, about the fact that we, as young children, may not have an opportunity to really live the life that we envision for ourselves because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Then there was at one point in school, I think it was in 1997, when this guy said that Jesus was coming back, I think it was September, I can't remember which day it was, and all of us was kind of at a standstill. My point to you is, is that the school systems were charged with Christianity it was charged with a very clear understanding of the faith that we share in the Bahamas. But 20 yeah, years yeah. displaced, talk to me, Cassius, 20 years displaced, they're having more conversations you know. about um, uh, transgender education, transgender misinformation, whether we're homophobic, uh, why lesbianism and, and, and homosexuality are not accepted the way that they're accepted in other spaces globally. Talk to me about what's happening in this country, Cassius. Talk to me. Because See, we, don't, we still don't have the, the trans, opportunity the trans, to cast this. The transgender people don't want acceptance. They want global dominance. They don't want acceptance. It was, it was never about acceptance being taking over our life. And so they hushed us up. They kept us quiet and tell us, oh, if we speak against them, we're homophobic and we this. And they, 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 even, they even criminalize us, us criticizing them and call it hate crimes and they call it um, civil rights, their civil rights, and, and so they find a way to, to for global dominance. So it's never been about acceptance for them. Right now, for them to say to us that we don't want God to be father, they want God to be now gender neutral, it's an insult to us. And so, and right now, in Congress, the United States Congress, they're arguing whether or not a man can have a baby. You know, for us, as a civilized society, to be educated as we are, to be so damn stupid, to say, can a man have a baby? You know, we, I mean, for us to have this conversation and show you that we are crazy, because now, you know, a man can have a baby. So what they're saying is they're now changing the terms. In other words, your gender is your performance. In other words, Howard has been performing all his life as a male. So therefore, he's a male. If you decide today you want to change your performance as a female, then you are now a female. You know, and so this is where they're taking this. And so now... They're trying to redefine the, redefine the lines, redefine the terms. But what irritates me is that sensible people who've been to school, who are educated, who knows better, are quiet. Yeah, people. but that's what I was about to tell you, because you've taken on this sort of uh, uh, this push, and you're saying that you see that you've gotten 5 million people support globally to be able to say that they stand behind the Bahamas in their position, but the Bahamas hasn't taken a position at all. Cassius Stewart has been able to speak about these things, and there are a few persons who actually stand behind you as a result of that, but the Bahamas hasn't taken a strong position. They say that this is where we are. My point to you is, is that we haven't heard this sort of a push from any administration. We haven't heard the Free National Movement take on a strong position on this. We haven't heard the DNA take on a position on this. We haven't heard the PLP take on a position on this. We haven't heard the church, the clergy, the cloth take on a position of this. Now, we know individually there are concepts and ideas to say that you need to be able to keep yourself in alignment with what the Word of God says, but collectively, talk to me, collectively, we have, you see, Bishop Delton Fernanda and the Christian Council take on a position in being able to speak clearly about this. We have yet to see the Vice no. President in that particular capacity take these particular positions and speak on it. Why is it, Cassius, why is it that everyone's mums the word on the thing? Talk to me about it. Listen, Howard, I don't care. I don't care if they, be, if they don't want to speak up, I can speak up. If they want to embrace this sissy agenda that on them, they can be, I can be against them. I can oppose them. And I tell the people, listen, if I got to fight this by myself and fight this with my last breath, I can fight it. Because they will not consume the Bahamas. I represent the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I'm a citizen. 
I have a passport, the preamble of, and the constitution of the Bahamas gives me the right to speak for the Bahamas. I'm a Bahamian, and I'm speaking for the Bahamas. The Bahamas will not embrace transgender. The Bahamas will not embrace homosexuality. Homosexuality will never be a part of our lifestyle. We will never normalize it. But their if position, come after me, then come. Their position, care, Cassius, listen, is, is that is always existed. Them. Listen, homosexuality has always it's been existed from Sodom and Gomorrah. It's been around. But we will never legalize it in the Bahamas. Yes, we have gay people in the Bahamas. They want to exist. Let them be exist. See, how the problem comes is, if they want to be homosexuals in their closet, then they can get judged in their closet. But the minute the legislative decide to make that law, then all of us get in judge for them. Cassius Stewart will not get judged for no, no sissies. No, that ain't gonna happen. If you want to be, if you want to be gay, then go be gay. All you want, God will judge you by yourself. But the minute Brave Davis or whoever in Parliament decide to make that law, then God judges the entire nation for that sin, and God Cassius, will not judge the Bahamas. You're getting strong with it because you're getting strong with it. Let me tell you why. And I'm going to take this telephone call, ladies and gentlemen. You know what to do: three two three six two three two three two five four three one six. 325-4259, anywhere from the family of islands, 242-300-5720. We heard Natino in his particular capacity when he spoke at um, um, Meet the Press, at, um, um, the University of the Bahamas, when he spoke up and he, he stood up as the prime minister was giving his detail and says that uh, this administration, this PLP administration is the queerest in the history of the Bahamas. This is the information that he indicates. And if you want to know about somebody mm -hmm. in, in information, you only can ask the community that exists in those particular spaces. Let me take the telephone call. Call you on the line with his live. Go ahead. Hey, good day. How you doing, Howard? I'm good, man. What's up? Well, so just so refreshing to hear the day. And, and I agree with you here so much, you know, because, you know, like, I have a daughter who married to a woman. Do you understand how you say that, man? You I say you have a daughter that married to a woman? Come on, your phone muffled. Take it from out your shirt. But no, but that's, that's what I'm saying. So, but I I accept all for what she did. That's her thing. You understand? That's my job. I'm going to try to cut her off. I said, what you do that? That's the first part. It's in family. But that's her choice. You understand? But what I have a problem with is, every time, how hard a superhero can be gay? How to, how to watch a cartoon and a little cartoon thing? Like, you trying to force people something to make for the whole it's not even me, you know, because I ain't gonna ever be that. But uh, the children, you, you formulate their mind. And the thing about it is, it's like, that's a real mind right there, standing up and saying, you know what, they're not for stuff. I don't want it. So, but if you do it, now you can just see it like that. Like, they ain't no one trying to kill them for doing what they want to, you know. And like I say, they ain't no one trying to ever bother my daughter. But the same thing, that's hot thing. She can't make, can't put. Every time I have dinner, I come around my own talking, but I got to take that. I got to do this. I said, oh, me, never. You understand? That's their thing. So why I have to be vilified? And I can't, you have, a, you have a point of view. You like, 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 I ain't going to use the way that he is, but all of this is supposed to be. Yeah, you have a, you have a wife, right? So why can't I tell you my point? Why, why, why have to, I got to get, Lock up or whatever, because I tell you, I ain't into you or Shia or whatever. I need to try to force you something. And, and like I said, I love I love them, but I don't want to be them. I, and I don't me. I wrong because I tell you I don't want to be. Right? Let so me I, ask you this question I, before you go. Let me ask you this question. Don't don't go. Let me let me ask you this question. Um, you say she married to a woman. Does? Yeah, but I think they didn't get the <laughs> This is a lot with you. You put too much on the table today. I can't. I got the life ain't big enough to cut this all. This me, me too thick. Go ahead. Okay. But then you could get the baddest man, right? Like, uh, like, like a serial killer, or rapist, a murderer, or and all these things. Up. And you can put them in jail. That don't bother them, you know. What, what the waste management could do to them? Think about it. What the waste uh, management in jail is? Um, uh, rape? Solitary confinement. Sorry to tell. Okay, okay, okay. I see what you Once did. I see what you did. You know, people can't take that. So you can imagine the like, side. A lot of people that get into it, but I think they like the lifestyle. Like, it's a thing. You understand? But one thing, but I ain't gonna lie. Some people just find like the genuine love but, or be committed to whatever. But once you join me, it's hard for me and my wife to join me. It's the eye to eye all the time. But let me ask you this. 
So she got married. Did you support her and her position? You accepted her. You love her. We accept that. Did you yeah, show up to also, the wedding? I have, I have, it's like, I would I know, but I just got to be 55 for the night. I've been married here longer. I remember when I grew up on East East Santa Street, too, right? Uh, I remember when boy, like, he used to walk out there, he used to have his tie, like, he gets here. Yeah. And when he walk out on East Street, they used to place him in the head with Guinness and all that. Mm -hmm. I used to feel sorry for him. But he didn't care. That was him. He was doing his thing. Over there, we used to laugh up and joke up at him. But you know, he, he couldn't never tell me nowhere. else. My brother would kill him, and he told me, my brother, so plenty of work on him. But being, like, what I'm saying is, I don't have no problem with that. That's you. You understand? It? But don't try to force me. Like, that's a, somebody, like, they, they tell them. And they want, they like, they, 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 a big old man on, you know what? He just feel like he won't be with a little, a little child. You understand? We already said it wrong. But now how you can convince me that that's right? I mean, I hope it ain't one of my children or my grandchildren now. That it ain't all that stuff up to death. So that ain't they never washed down the beach. But my thing is, when somebody like this, this, this gentleman right now is in your mind, and somebody has to take the rules, Netflix, I can't watch one thing. I'm out, I see right into them serious and I see. See in my way, be like, here it comes, here it comes. So you gotta get it. Mm -hmm. They gotta push it on you. Yeah. And if you understand, like, I yeah. see him, like, I, yeah, I can turn off the TV and I beat and make it a practice now. The minute they do that, boop, get off. Gone. Because you can see waiting on it. Yeah. But they're trying to force me this time. So but like, you, don't, you sound like you're not even conflicted because. I know of people who have uh, this kind of a lifestyle that exists in their spaces and they talk out against it, but it's hard to kind of reject your child when you love this particular person. And you, what, what you can do? I am conflicted. You still stand strong. No, I am conflicted. Like I say, that's my dad. You know, I went over and around the corner and killed somebody. They wanted to be right there. Oh, that's, that's my, my good child. child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Them. yeah. I ain't saying that's how detrimental it is, but at the same time, that's our choice. Yeah, I can't live yeah. one second and get them shut. Stop now, they on their own. They free to make the choices. This I is, is a good call today, man. That. You know what? You, you can't be there. Like this. I like, all I can tell you is, like, that's what, but see, after 18, I was an advisor. I ain't no more provider. <laughs> all I can tell you is, <laughs> if I was. You're an advisor I, now? I, I appreciate you, my brother. I tell you, it's the best thing uh, what I do, but I can tell you this. At, at this point, all I can tell you, if I was you, I would consider this. That, that, that's my job. Now. Thank you, man. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate your telephone call. I get, I, yeah, I, man. I, Thank you, sir. You all have a good day. He's a good, decent man. I appreciate you giving us a call. Cassie, that was a strong to talk yeah. about these things. Guys, you know the numbers to do. 323-6232, 325-4316, anywhere from the family of islands, 242-300-5720. Or hit me up on the text, 422-4796. We'll be right back after this. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. We'll be back right after this. The Foundation. The Foundation. Guardian Radio and The Foundation are on the move. Bahamas, this one's for you. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Every Thursday, The Foundation with Howard Grant will highlight small businesses throughout the country, far and wide. Your products, services, prices, and personality. We want to hear it all. Get your 30 or 60 second advertisement heard on air at a fraction of the cost. We here at The Foundation understand the times and don't want you to be left behind. With Guardian Radio, you reach your specific demographic and it is unmatched. We reach thousands daily. Get your products off the shelf and your services in their hearts. Small Business Thursdays with The Foundation only on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. For more information, call 302-2300 or the Help Me Howard line at 827-0111. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Get your business moving today. 
Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The new Guardian Radio app is here. Listen live to all our video stream select programs in our studio. Get information about Guardian Radio shows and our hosts. Send messages including text, email, and even call. All from our amazing new Guardian Radio app. Download it free today in your app store for your Apple device or Play Store for your Android device. The all new and improved Guardian Radio app. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation, this beautiful Friday, laid back Friday. Hope you're out there having a good time. You know what to do. Um, uh, normally the weekend, we do our, our bit at the top of the week. We start high and try to kind of pull it down at the end of the week. But it no, it doesn't normally happen like that. It's sort of a social discourse and uh, people find themselves almost enraged. <laughs> to talk about these things today ladies and gentlemen if you're just tuning in i don't know where you were but i'm happy to have you um we're talking with none other than cassie stewart cassie stewart is kind of zooming in and talking having a good conversation with us to talk about this sort of a crusade and agenda that he's taken on to talk about the fact that we as bahamians will not stand this particular agenda this idea that's being uh, spilt and, and and you know projected upon us to talk about uh this position for transgender education and information. We've heard him, we've seen him for a while uh, talking about that on national media. I want to read a text to Cassie that just came through. It says, Howard, there is a silent P in the LGBT plus movement in reference to minor attracted people. Did you see all the people on CNN guests protecting the Dalai Lama for kissing the boy? Wake up! Pedophilia is the silent P. That was one of the most disgusting displays of... Uh, you know something, um, uh, Cassius, I'm going to be very clear about this. I was supposed to have a conversation about this. Uh, if you did not have mm -hmm. an opportunity, all you have to do is just go and text, uh, type in Dali Lambo, uh, kiss boy, right? <laughs> and it was, an, it was atrocious. It was, it was absolutely vile. To watch this, it made me cringe. I couldn't watch the entire thing. It was, it was horrible. And I looked at this and I said, there is a grander scheme here. We, know, we often have conversation about the new world government, the new world order. And there is a concept that has been in the work for a while that seems to be manifesting right before our very eyes as it relates to the new world, one world religion. Right? To discredit all religions and give them a sense of humanity, to bring them under one umbrella, to push this particular agenda down the road. We're seeing churches take on a conversation, take on a position to talk about this idea that uh, the LGBTQ plus isn't wrong. There are churches taking on this position that we should have a gender neutral God. There are churches that ascribe to Jesus Christ and the teaching thereof that have shifted their position and speak of it as a new age agenda. Talk to me. It seems as though from their perspective that the God that we serve, who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore, the God that we serve, who remain consistent in this position, the God that we serve, that we've known all our lives, that our forefathers who shifted his position. And we're not mm -hmm. seeing anyone locally take on a position to speak to these things. Talk to me about it, Cassius. Uh, well, I, I, could, I could clearly say that all I'm going to hell, if they don't stand up for righteousness, they're going to hell. I don't care what kind of cloth you're wearing. I don't care what kind of color you're wearing, you're going to hell. 
because this is of Satan. This agenda is from Satan and um, to be able to def see what they're going after, Howard, the LGBT community and they're going after the image of God. When a man goes to the man, that stops procreation, that stops the image of God. When you abort children, it stops the image of God. Lesbianism stops the image of God. And God is very angry with that because if the church is now complicit in the, in the destroying the image of God, he is very angry. And for a man to twist his, his whole makeup to be a woman, that's distorting the image of God. And God is very angry with the church. God is very angry with these nations. And wrath will come. I mean, I, I don't want to seem like the prophet from Bingham, but fire will come and wrath will come because right now in the Bahamas, I don't, I don't know if you know that, they're having on, I can tell you right now, an island house on April 15th. That's probably tomorrow. Yeah, right? it's tomorrow. tomorrow. They're, they're, having, they're, having, they're having a conversation that homosexuality is not in the Bible and they're now recording it. Some, some, some group from the United States saying that, you know, in 1945, some Yale, Yale discovered, 1946, Yale discovered that homosexuality is not a part of the Bible. And this is right now being done in Island House out west. And so they now want to discredit the Bible and saying that it's okay to be homosexual. Let well, me tell you something. I gotta yeah? go see that, Cassius. That, I haven't seen that. I don't know anything about that, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. I haven't heard anything about it. I gotta go read I it. I report it to you. Right, I report it to you right now whilst What's you're on the air. But these people, these people, these people aren't interested in acceptance. They're interested in global dominance, and they want to come and take our children. They want to take our lifestyle, and they really usher in the Antichrist. And that's really what's happening. But let me tell you something. If they want to get judged, let them get judged. That's fine. I, Cassius Joe, ain't getting judged for them being with it. The minute we decide to make this thing national, God will judge the entire nation. So all of us who's, who's saying that we ain't a part of that, but be quiet, we will get judged for them. So we got to speak up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to present legislation to this government that gender is between a man and a woman. Gender is one man. Gender is what you born at birth. You know that the American Medical Association has just passed a law that now when you're born, that your birth certificate becomes neutral, that you will now decide your gender when you get older. So, you know, these people, all these people are crazy. The American Medical Association is now saying that when people are born in the United States, they don't have no gender. You determine your gender when you get older. Cassie, this these is people heavy. Are older. I read in the stuff, Cassie. Is. I'm these reading the stuff. This is heavy. You read, tell, tell the nation, tell the nation what's going on. Well, in this the is information. That, was, did you find this on? Because it says sponsored. Did you find this on Facebook? No, some people. Some people send this Somebody to me. Send some people to send this to me. Okay, yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, what if the word homosexual was never meant to be in the Bible? Join us reading and Saturday, uh, the fifteenth at five p.m. Both the director, they put the names here, and the producer. It starts to talk about nineteen forty-six. The mistranslation of a shifted culture is feature is a feature documentary that follows the story of a tireless researchers who trace the origin of the anti-gay movement among Christian, Christians at that to get to grave mistranslation of the Bible in 1946. It chronicles the discovery of a never-before-seen archives at Yale University, which unveil astonishing new revelations and cast significant doubt on any biblical basis for LGBTQIA plus prejudice. This is absolutely banana. Let me tell you what. Now, I don't, do, I don't do hermeneutics, right? I don't. I, I don't do hermeneutics, crazy, right? Crazy. But I also know that many scholars and having conversations and reading through biblical texts that there was this allegation and possibility about, the, uh, about Paul, the, the apostle Paul, uh, possibly, who was initially Saul, possibly being um, uh, of this particular persuasion. And they indicated, even through text, when you read the text, that said that this prick is like a prick on my side. I can't. I, and then a lot of theologians would actually indicate that this was a very clear understanding. And then they would go back and start in persecuting the Christians. He would defile the Christians. This is this is what the conversations would be. So to talk about this and juxtapose it to what we saw in Gomorrah, and juxtapose it to what we saw as it relates to holiness, as a standard, is bananas to me. It's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. These things at the very forefront, I think we need to understand these things. So with the information, that's all you have to, to really study to show yourself approved. With the information that you have, that you can be able to disseminate this and say, hey, listen, this don't make no sense mm -hmm. at all. Let me take a telephone call. Caller, you're on the line. Go ahead. Hello. Good afternoon. Hey, what's up, man? Buddy. 
know, this is a long talk, but it's been going on for so many years. But the funniest thing is that I don't understand is we talking about it this a lot, but why, why, why are so much of the gay people and the lesbians still hiding in the closet? Why they don't come out publicly and say who they are? Another thing, check this in every world. You tell them, say, okay, we agree with y'all. All the gay guys, we can give y'all an island to call y'all island all by yourself. And we want to give it to you free of charge, you go and develop it. All men on that island. But same thing with all the lesbian women. We give them an island all to themselves. Go and develop it. We'll come back and check with y'all in 10 years. If we send 50 on each island, when we go back in 10 years, do you think we'll find 51? Hmm. <laughs> nope. do, you find, do you think nope. we'll find 51 on each island? Nope. If all the lesbians are on one island and all the gay men on the mm -hmm. next island, I don't believe we'll find more than 100 people on each of the, the, the two islands together, right? God mm -hmm. is in the midst. Mm -hmm. What is God telling you? Person from the other island to come over to procreate to make another child. For some reason, if you sit on the island by yourself, nothing could happen. What does nature tell you? Nature tells you ain't nothing could happen unless you get somebody from the opposite sex. So what are you doing together laying in bed with a woman and you are a female? What's going to happen? You only can get old together. You never can produce nothing. You never can do nothing. Whatever you own, you have to leave mercy to the church because you have no children to leave nothing to. I've known men and women all my life. We know them right around in this little small island that you can think back in history, you've never seen them with the member of the opposite sex, nowhere in public, no time ever. Not even to church, not to the movies, not to the restaurant, not to Junkaloo, no time. You've ever seen them with a member of the opposite sex, but yet they keep their, 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 their beliefs in the closet. We know Come on and tell us who you really are. We, okay? we know politicians who do the exact same thing, my brother, right now. We know politicians right now. And the House of Assembly, right now. Talk to me, Sparky. You want to touch it like that? We know politicians right now, Cassius, right now, mm -hmm. who will never open their mouth and utter anything to do with this. There, there are many of them who would say that my personal life and preference is nobody else's business. There are many of them who would take on this kind of an idea that says that, hey, listen, I'm, uh, what I do in my house is none of your business. I'm doing the people's work, so forth and so on. And they carry out their agenda. We know them, we know exactly um, uh, who they are, and we've been seeing them for years. And, you know, you'd have mm -hmm. one talk show host over the years uh, or other talk show hosts take on this kind of position and poke fun at it, right? And we all laugh it off and leave it alone. But as we dive deeper into the future and get here, we recognize that there may be an issue. We are perpetuating an idea. And listen, not just men, you know, women also. Women also. And you see... When we identify these men and women and give them opportunity to be able to step up uh, as leadership at, for leadership positions in our community, if they don't espouse the view of the community, I don't know where they should get that opportunity. Cassius, talk to me about it. Well, you know, <clears throat> society has evolved. And um, when you look at you know, in the 1900s, we had the Industrial Revolution and um, you know the Age of Enlightenment and so on. So we've been evolving. And it seems, it seems as if we think that we are so smart now that we could outsmart God, one, and we could outsmart our own biology, you know, at the, at the, at the lower zone and wide chromosome. You can't change your biology. And um, these people are wanting to change their sex because of their, um, um, their lust. You know, every heterosexual wants, perhaps, you know, I mean, I, I'm, let, me speak, let, me speak, let me speak genuinely. Most heterosexual men would like to have three and four wives. Right? Not me, though. Hold on, hold on. Howard, maybe you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And so, hold most heterosexual men want one wife and a bunch of concubines. <laughs> but it's it, it, <laughs> just only one wife. That's but, but, it. But, but, but what I'm saying is it's illegal. And so, heterosexual people aren't agitating for more than one wife or agitating for things that we know that is not right. It is the LGBT community that is agitating for all these immoral acts. You know, you first of all, you want to. You, you want to marry a man, and, and so we can't let that happen. But they, they've, the morphed, never happen, they've right? morphed the concept of immoral. 
by the introduction of a concept that says love is love. We've heard that before. And we've that snuck in this idea that love is love. And it has been attached to the minds of those that are growing to not see the difference or the immorality in these particular things and only see this as love. Talk to me right. about and, it. And that's, and that's what it, This is where the scenes they, they are. Went, see, see, they went wrong, bro. They're in lust for one another. Because Paul talks about it in the book of Romans. Because you are in lust for one another, that doesn't make it right, you know? And so, but but God turned them over to their own to their own destruction because of their lust. You know, everybody everybody plagued with some kind of desire. But it's the self-control that comes in. And so these people don't want to have self-control. They don't want to have parameters. They don't want to live with parameters. And they, they want us now to legitimize their lust. And we are not going to legitimize their lust. They've legitimized it in Canada. They're legitimizing it in the United States. But in the Bahamas, we cannot legitimize the lust that they're going to, they, they want us to legitimize. We cannot do that. Not in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. The theme that came... The theme that Just came, like we, or, or, we have to control. We, we have to control ourselves. We have to control our desires. They too must learn to control themselves. Because listen, and you know everything has parameters. Howard, when the sun rose this morning, it has a parameter. The moon has a parameter. The sea has a parameter. The sea knows exactly how far to come. These people don't want to live without parameters. They want to break all the barriers. They want to break all the parameters and live however the hell they want to live. Yeah, because it's the agenda. There's the agenda. Yeah, Alistair Crawley, Alistair, Alistair Crawley, uh, and the um, um, the Book of Satan and the House of Satan, so forth and so on. You can be able to read the documentaries, watch the documentaries, and see these things. Their agenda and model for uh, to do as thou wilt, do as thou wilt. Yes. This kind of a yes. concept yes. that exists in this particular space is to talk about do as thou wilt. This is liberty, right? And this is the same democracy or liberty that America continues to be able to shove down the throats of those persons who are steadfast in their traditions. And they say, hey, listen, you're not living the way that you should. There is liberty here. You could do what you want, right? And here, let's, let's introduce this concept of democracy to you. And the entire world is uh, uh, disenfranchised as a result of this introduction of democracy. Let me take a telephone call. Calling you on the line with his live. Go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Howard Grant. Good afternoon, my brother. What's happening? And good afternoon, Mr. Cassie Stewart. Good you know, I, I'd like to thank Mr. Stewart for uh, bringing to light the fact of the the individual sin versus imposing the imposition of this particular uh, transgender problem that they want to create, right? I and mean, I'm noticing, and I agree with the, the silence and the conformity and subservience, whatever, from the status quo, the educated popul populace, even the, the, the clergy, right? And so this is this is frightening for me. So I'm noticing a very very cozy relationship between the church and the state. Yes. All right. And so I noticed. I, I know what he was talking about because during the pandemic, I was wondering why the educated masses were so willing to conform and be so subservient to a totalized paradigm. But since you mentioned Alistair Crawley, right? I believe uh, this guy Kinsey and John Money read Alistair Crawley's book because there's I, I must have been the Institute for Sex Research. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, see, you're well read. And I just learned about this, like, in January sometimes, because people send me this information. So we, we see the insignificance of John Hopkins University, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have a guy named John Money, right? His basic concept was ch children are gender, are gender neutral at birth. So this is where this, this, uh, this, uh, this deviance come from. So there's also a guy called Kinsey. Can't remember his first name. Uh, the sexual, he wrote a book called Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. And so... They, 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 he was a social reformer in which his, 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 his agenda was to stir humanity or re-engineer or social engineer, like Cassie mm -hmm. State, um, steer humanity, humanity away from Ju uh, Christian Judeo values or religious and ethical values, all right? So they believe in deviance and sexual pleasure. You need to read it, and most people will be, but what, what, is, what is frightening, right, Cassie, is these guys were doing these, exper they were doing experiments, sex sexually pervasive experiments on children younger than one year old. One year old, you understand? Yes, yes, they, yes, they were doing yes, this. Yes. So, 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 I, 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 I listen. I, I with you, Gaffius. Nothing you said was incorrect. I mean, you know, the people with you. So, and I just with uh, the blind one express. I feel the same way. But here's what's going on now. It, 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 you see, Gaffius, the, 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 the imposition by the LGB communities, whatever they have a problem with, we already accept them because they're in everybody family, right? Yeah. So, but why you want right. to impose? That's where the problem lies, Mr. Gaffius. So I'm riding with you. I'm rowing the boat ahead of you. Uh, and so yes. then the question, another question, right, Mr. Castor, what is the benefit of teaching transgenderism? You see what I'm saying? There is no benefit. 
put food in questions that one should ask. You know, this this is yeah. this, 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 this can't be. But what I'm saying is, Howard, please notice the the, the the influence of John Hopkins University on global policies. Policies, please. This John money was from John Hopkins University. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so yeah. you have yeah. to be able to yeah. juxtapose the power of these entities to know who's pushing and behind these agendas. Yeah, but that's so what we don't my know point. if our leaders have gotten con- incentive because we have signed on, on so many things. And, you know, Cassie's be way more familiar to, uh, with, 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 with this particular, with those things than us. But uh, this, this question of the rules, uh, uh, the same way you said, they said they, they, the politicians or people wouldn't comment in the House of Assembly or the Parliament. They said, they, 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 when they bedroom, stay in the bedroom, but they don't. But it's the same thing with, with, with the gay community. Why don't you keep your bedroom in your bedroom instead of the same position? Have a good day, man. Thank you, my brother. I do appreciate your telephone call. I want to be very clear with you when I say this. Um, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that a great deal... A great deal of our persons, watch me, a great deal of our persons and leadership in this country have gone off this, uh, to universities such as this, have gone off to these particular places and taken on this agenda. They've already been indoctrinated and conditioned into this mindset that this is accepting. They've already been able to see these things in their university status and recognize that this is the way of the world. This is the way that the world is working. I'll never forget a conversation that I had with Marlon Johnson. Marlon Johnson, who is a professed person that says that he's no longer um, uh, taking on the, the values of a Christian and taking on these particular values, he is, is of sorts. This is a conversation that Marlon Johnson and I had. But he's told me about the fact that he used to go to, to um, um, National Christian Academy, NCA, right? I said, what? He said, I was a prefect, I was this, I was that, I was this. I was uh, evangelism, I was doing all those things. And then when I went off, and then when I went off, it's always the proverbial gateway that actually leads you away from some of the foundational things that you see. And then when I went off and I saw the way that things were happening in life and I saw the way that these particular persons were living and I recognized that, hey, listen, what is going on? See, a lot of our leaders have gone off to the world and accepted their views and positions and recognized that they're still doing well. They're still making money. These are some of the most successful people. They come from successful backgrounds. So something has to be wrong with what's happening locally because we're still poor yeah. and we have this faith. We're still deprived oh, and we have this faith. Let me, tell, let, me, let me tell you what they do. I was a, I was a Goodwill ambassador for the United Nations um, a few years back. And um, you know I had an opportunity to be on a couple of occasions and um, be a part of subcommittee groups. But I found, you know, we were, I was a young person. I was the most distinguished youth in New Providence. And uh, being a young person, you know, we were naive. And so every time we would have caucus meetings, there was this, always this group of females. They would come to the to come to our meeting and saying that, oh, why don't you add this to, to your to your to your um, agenda of sexual orientation? Now at the time we were young, I didn't know what sexual orientation was. I just thought, you know, you were sexually or understanding who you are. Until I got mature and I realized. 17 years ago, they were trying to cause the youth caucus of the United Nations from the Caracom Summit to push the sexual orientation to be a part of the dialogue. Now, sexual orientation means accepting homosexuality and lesbian, but at the time, they never told us that. It was just making sure that sexual orientation be a part of the dialogue and the conversation. And so they deceived us into saying, we're pushing this agenda, and mind you, we fought vigorously to have a part of the conversation, but I didn't know, we didn't know what the hell they were, they were doing. And, and so what they do now is at the United Nations level, they would come and they would speak to different subcommittee groups and um, to push this agenda. And apparently Belinda them just came from the UN too. And I'm sure they pushed that job down their throat too. And so, and so now it's now about transgenderism in school now. So back 17 years ago, it was a right to have these homosexual and lesbian. And now, wow. now they move beyond that now. It's wow. now about transgender. And now it's about educating the young children of accepting transgender. And so now it's about global dominance for them. They want to take over the entire world. They want the whole world to become perverted and freaks. And that ain't going to happen. Wow. Ladies and not gentlemen. In the, not in the Bahamas, by the way. Be a part of the conversation. 323-623-2325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the family violence. 242-300-5720. Uh, and you can also be able to hit me up on the text. 422-4796. Let me take this quick commercial break and be right back after this. Foundation. The Foundation will be back right after this. The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. The 
At Marco's Pizza, you don't have to feel guilty about enjoying our pizza. Now offering a gluten-friendly cauliflower crust. It's a perfect excuse to eat your veggies with the cauliflower crust. Made with real cauliflower. Real gluten-friendly. Try our new cauliflower crust on any small pizza. You can only find our signature gluten-friendly cauliflower crust at Marco's Pizza Bahamas. Order now at MarcosPizzaBahamas.com. Tired of paying too many bills and loan payments each month? Shrink your monthly debt payments down to one easy payment with our debt consolidation loan. It also has a built-in savings that pays you 5% interest. Inquire about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. At Bahamas Bus and Truck Company Limited, we provide vehicles known for quality and durability. From the iconic Jeep Wrangler to the award-winning Grand Cherokee, we've got your everyday driver covered. For larger tasks, our Ram 1500, Mitsubishi Fuso Canter Trucks, CMC Verica Vans, and Fuso Rosa Jitneys do way more than just deliver. We even carry a wide variety of pre-owned vehicles. To keep you going, our parts, service department, and body shop can accommodate our brands and others. Call us today at 322-1722 or email info at bahamasbus.com. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. Found the foundation. The foundation. And we are back, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant and your company always, always siempre. Yo me gusto. I always have a beautiful time with you guys on a Friday and uh, being able to talk about these things. And uh, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, your involvement uh, can lead more than just gum bussing. And if it, if it takes uh, an opportunity, because it's an exhausting thing to see these things, to take on such a strong position and never stand up for it. It's wild. I don't know whether or not we as a people have, um, uh, we've matured, but, you know, when it comes down to anything below the thigh, as it relates to our kneecaps and our legs, uh, we haven't developed that. We haven't stood for anything in this country uh, after we have had the great strike, right? Uh, we haven't stood for anything in this country. Uh, you believe that having a conversation about the fact that you vote, your voice is being heard, but when it comes to real issues that talk about the direction of our country, especially in the time that we're in right now, and seeing what's happening globally, it's time for us to be able to make a stand. It's time for us to be able to stand and say to our governments that the time has come for us to be able to get an opportunity for ourselves. That we've allowed one administration after another to do as they please, but not this one. This one is the New Day administration. And there is an expectation after you've made these pronouncements into the atmosphere that you would move in accordance to those particular things. We got your blueprint for change, and there is an expectation that we move in accordance to the change that you indicated that we would move towards. This may not necessarily be a headline issue uh, in your blueprint for for change, but you can see socially this is a determining factor for the course that we chart for the next 50 years in this country. Where will we stand in the side of history? Will history be kind to us as a society? Will history say to us that we stood in our convictions as a society? It's very clear. Let's talk about these things. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm with, in the last few minutes, I'm with um, uh, Cassie Stewart. And Cassie is just really being able to chop it down and talk about these things. Cassie, you call it a crusade that you've taken to yeah, take on listen, these particular things. I know. I, I can make a plea right now. I mean, for all of the members of parliament who are listening to me, all of the senators, all of the churches, all of you all. Either you with us or you decide exactly which side of the line you want. And so there is no down the line. There's no middle line. All of the parents who are listening to me, I want you all to get ready because in a few days we're going to be announcing the date 
politicians, Cassius, mm -hmm. let's get real now. Let's get real. Politicians do not respond to an individual inquest. They always respond to numbers. We have yet to amalgamate the numbers to identify the quote unquote us and them. There has only yes, been this kind of a social conversation where people lend their suggestion, but like I said, never stand on anything. So when it comes the down people, to the, the behaving people, you think they can stand? Of, 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 they have they are they are awake now, and they're going to show these politicians that listen. Either you're protecting our children, or you with you with the Satan movement. And um, those who are with the Satan movement, we can show them that they will not be elected again, and we can come against them. We're going to fight them because. Any homosexuality agenda is from the devil. I want to let everybody know who's listening to me. Homosexuality but your pastor, is the, from the, the devil. But your pastor will indicate something different, Matt Cassius. Let's shoot straight. I don't care. Listen. The pastor would say, well, are. what's the difference between this sin and that? If you are a homosexual or if you are uh, 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 someone out there keeping sweetheart, what is that's out there? He's a P-A-S-T-A, not P-A-S-T-O-R. And so them pastor, that's what they are, the pastor. You got to stand up. And he al dente. He ain't al dente. My God, this is a lot. And so listen, this agenda, this agenda, this agenda, this satanic agenda of transforming boys into girls, of transforming girls into boys is from the devil. And those in the church who do not stand up for this, they with them. So you got to decide what you want. If you want this side or you want that side, there's no I in the middle. You Past cannot be in the middle on this. Cass Cassius, they, they, they're concerned because, about. They're concerned about because there is this sort of sort of social speculation to indicate that these persons that live this quote unquote alternative lifestyle are paid well, and if they're going to church. They often pay regular. You think that these pastors are going to tamper with the collection plate? Talk to me. Well, see, the, the, see, the, see the, the, the problem with the Christian church is that they got to decide who is their God. Jesus said you cannot serve God and money. So if money is and their mammon. God, then they go bow to homosexuality. But if God is your God, then you will say no to wrong. And so the problem with the church is that money is their God. Jesus Christ is not their God. Money is their God. I can speak to all of them churches. Money is your God. You've got to repent because money is your God. You're supposed to bow to one thing, which is Jesus Christ, not the money. If they take everything I have for me, everything I have for me, in fact, I don't own nothing. I don't own a house. I don't own no car. The children I have, I don't own because I already gave them back to him and they were born. So I don't own nothing. So what you can take from me? I stand up for what? You can't take nothing from me. If you take the house I have, go out and give me something better. So take it. If you take my car, you can give me something better. Take it. You take my life, then I get a better life waiting for me. So what you can take from me? What you can take from me? My God, Cassius, let me read a couple of these texts. It says, hi, Howard. When people start talking about God says this and God says that, you are aware that they are only speculating because there is no proof that God exists. This is heavy. And some Fire people believe this. So, he, so his conviction only exists in his mind and it is not reality. In this borderline delusion, Bohemians abuse the Bible and the essence of any God like presence. This is the text that comes through. These are the texts that people have out there. Let me read the next one. It says, good show today, Howard. When God allows a human to have both sexual or, or, um, uh, organs, when his new image, where is his image? I'm sorry. God makes no mistake. He created man with woman inside him. I agree with your guess. But he is a bit aggressive. Maybe I was born. I don't know what this word is, right? It says, as God is taking me. This is a lot. This is a lot that persons are saying. He says, Howard, uh, respect your guests. Please ask your guests how he could be contacted. They want to know your contact. He says, have. Uh, have you guys seen the TED Talks about pedophilia? And then this is Howard, you need to join Cassius and strengthen the BDM. Come like you ain't scared to have a real conversation about real issues. Certain things need to be discussed. Howard, respect. These are texts that's coming through, right? It says, um, um, question, if any one of you who both have daughters discovered that your daughter was shacking up with their boyfriend, what would you do? In my eyes, in the eyes of God, which sin is worse, heterosexual fornication or homosexual fornication? See, Cassius, I told you that this will be the conversation. 
This will be the conversation. Let me see if I can get these two calls in 30 seconds. Call you on the line. You got 30 seconds before we get out of here. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Howard. Hey. The big problem here is that one thing, they are trying to legalize that. Okay, okay. All the other things ain't being legalized. Ah, tell them, tell them, preach it, preach it. Okay, fornication, adultery. They ain't legalizing it. They, they ain't being legalized. Okay, that's the issue. Have a good day. Thank you, my brother. Thank I do you, appreciate your telephone call. One more call. 30 time. seconds. 30 seconds. The real 30 seconds. Go ahead, call. You got 30 seconds. Do it. However, you guys are on point. However, I want to investigate the church because we can, we can miss the focus. The difference between adult, I mean, um, homosexual and adultery is you can fix adultery with fornication by getting back to the person. Homosexual, you got to get out of the person like in order to fix that. The one is abomination, one is sin. Again, like the first caller said, I'm speeding in 30 seconds. We, no, no adult, no fornicator is trying to legalize their actions. But the homosexual agenda is trying to raise a direct against, against humanity and to emancipate mankind. God bless you. Thank you, my brother. I do appreciate your telephone call. Thank you so much. We got two minutes before we get out of here. It says the Dalai Lama, how about the centuries pedophiles who has been going in the Catholic Church? Oh, my God. He says, Howard, did you see the U.S. Bud Light boy boycott after Bud Light pushed the trans agenda? Oh, my God. He says, Howard, Mr. Yeah. Stewart is right. And, and so many soft. Let me see if I can read this. It says, um, and so many soft single people in the Bahamas Parliament right now. We need... Uh, to only have men and women that's married with families. The, the, that's why they want to pass laws for the Bahamas, for the LGBTQ community, and whatever the hell else uh, it is. He said, the Lord help us. They said, Texas coming through. He says, I hope that he respects my views as I try to respect his. But as usual, the Bible, his view supports the violence, not Jesus. The Bible speaks to not judging, especially if you are not without sin, except the people for who they are, but revert, reserve judgment for Jesus. These are the information coming through. Cassius, I am flat out of time. I want to thank everybody for kind of tuning in. You guys have a beautiful weekend. On Monday, we're going to have a great conversation with the uh, Kimsey Ferguson, the head of the BPSU, uh, and being able to chop that down. I have a full slate next week to kind of chop it down. Cassius, I want to thank you, my brother. You got to, whenever you come back yes, from wherever sir. you are, to come and sit with us and chop it down. Either you with us or you with them. My my God, ladies and gentlemen, that is the show for today. I want to thank you so kindly. Have a beautiful weekend. Make sure you go down and check out Tiki Fridays. Byron over at the Tiki Hut, you get 30% off between 5 and 7 p.m. this evening. Go down to Willie's at, Kung Fr uh, at Fish Fry. Enjoy yourself in those particular instances. And all the areas and all persons that continue to be able to support the foundation, we want you to go out and support them. Go down to the Vanyas and ensure you get your, your, your hot sauce. Make sure you get your little something to taste down there on Prince Charles. Have a beautiful weekend, guys. Ensure that you're being good, being good and decent. And we'll see you on Monday. Godspear right here live and in full effect on, fr on Monday morning with the foundation. Have a great day, guys. See you later. Play this coming, you're a bit jumping. Oh, I'm a play LP.